Hello and welcome to NAFTA Can Your Bells. My name is Tosin of Molaja. This is the program that brings you all the important information you need to know about NAFDAQ. The agency is saddled with the responsibility of safeguarding our health by ensuring that the foods, drugs, cosmetics and medical equipment made available to us are safe and wholesome. Last week, we began exploring NAFDAQ's strides at improving its infrastructure from its ability to efficiently move around the country in different catchment areas with good and reliable vehicles, to transforming its operations and regulatory activities through the infusion of state-of-the-art information and communication technology and equipment. Today, we continue on this expose by looking at the agency's drive towards ensuring that all its formations across the nation have decent office facilities to operate from, an initiative that began barely four months after Professor Mujisola Adeye stepped into the role of the agency's chief executive officer. Let me go back to March of 2018, barely four months in NAVDAQ. I had to go to Yobe, and when they took me to our office at the Secretariat, I was shocked. Small, congested, hot, because, you know, everybody has to bring their own generator to, in a multi-story building, you know. Uh, and it was at that time that I knew uh, that it had that needs to have state offices for their own staff. Uh, the same thing in Meduguri. Uh, you know, the way people see you is the way they take you. And I was at Meduguri, the same trip, and I just wasn't satisfied with the environment. And that was when I started discussing with management uh, that we need to uh, improve the environment of our staff. But bear in mind that year, that time we were still paying our debt, the inherited debt. So we finished paying the debt in 2018 and then we started of course saving money uh, that is now going towards infrastructural uh, buildings uh, and IT. Uh, we have seven state offices that are being built now. Uh, Yobe, Kwara, Kebi, Shokoto, uh, Ocean State, Ebonyi, and uh, Ogun. Because I want our, first of all, I want NAVDAQ's presence to be well known there in each of these uh, state capitals. And at the same time, I want our staff to be uh, very well fulfilled in terms of the environment. And when we talk of MSMEs, you want the clients to come to a place where they feel comfortable, not uh, panting because they have to climb seven, seven stairs or you know, seven flights of stairs. Uh, so it's uh, all working together to make sure that uh, NAVDAQ is well placed. Despite tight financial constraints, the agency has been able to achieve these feats. The money you save is the money you spend. <laughs> We've been very prudent with our spending uh, and we have seen the result. I care for our workforce, our staff, but I also want a disciplined staff, workforce. And our staff have been so cooperative uh, and um, we have improved greatly in terms of the money that we get from our clients uh, and saving them, not just, the, not just uh, getting the money, uh, and saving them. Uh, because uh, we know that we have to use the money that the clients are giving us judiciously. In terms of uh, Infrastructural development of an agency, it is all about strategy. It is all about planning. Uh, why, when we are planning our budget, first of all, we know we have an idea of what we realized the previous year 
and what we may realize the following year, and what are the priorities. So the infrastructure is one of our priorities. IT is one of our priorities. Uh, therefore, we say, okay, what are the states in terms of infrastructure? What are the states that need to have their buildings uh, almost immediately? Having been there or having heard of what is going on there, and then we just follow uh, the lead in terms of what is mo most important at a particular time. This action being undertaken by the agency is very critical for the overall well-being and efficient operations of the agency. The infrastructural development we are undergoing now is because we discovered that some of our infrastructure are old. Some are in a state of disrepair. And for us to function as a serious medicine regulatory body, we must have our infrastructure at top shape. Some of our buildings are old. Some of our offices are located at federal sector. Some are located in rented apartments. So because of that, we are not able to function optimally. So there is need for us to have structures that is solely owned by NAVDAC so that we be able to operate optimally. And that's exactly what informed the reason why we are taking steps to address them. Professor Adeye, since she took helms of the agency, has taken time to visit across the country, listening to the workforce in the different zones to ensure that everything is done to guarantee a world-class work environment for them. During the past two years, we have had the privilege of the DG visiting VA in some of our states. For example, she visited um, Cross River State and she's also visited um, Edo State. And also our um, formation in um, Delta State also. And as a result of, uh, let me say, as a result of her vi uh, visit, she has really, really encouraged because she sees the situation that the staff are faced on ground and she ensures that those, the, those situations are improved. And that actually encourages the staff. The fact that the Director General, in the name of Professor Mojiso Ladeye, comes in and listens to the staff one on one and takes seriously. They, they actually they are amazed at the way she writes down the points of every staff on whatever they feel they have to say to, to, for, for, the, for their job to be improved or whatever uh, challenges they feel that they are, uh, that they are facing. And, she said, and after, it's, it's not just her taking notes, after she has left, a lot of things are done to improve those, uh, those uh, situations that have been mentioned. So that has really, really encouraged a lot of the staff in the uh, in, 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 in South South Zone. NAFDAQ and your else will be back in a moment. Please stay tuned. Yes, come in. Uncle, uncle. Tayo, Tayo. <laughs> yes, sir. Welcome. Have Thank you seat. very much, sir. It's good to see you. Uh, where's uh, Junior and his mom? Uncle, oh, see, we are here. Mama. Uh, Junior, quick. Go get your uncle some alcohol from Auntie Carol's shop. No, 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 no. Junior, please go sit. Don't you know that sending Junior to go buy this kind of drinks could instill in him the urge to drink alcohol at this tender age? Children under the age of 18 should abstain from alcohol. No, Uncle, please. Give me the money. I'll go buy it by myself. I didn't know that. But I told you. Navdak says alcohol is a no-go area for children under the age of 18. I will never send him on such an errand. It is the business of all of us. Parents, guardians, marketers and retailers to stop underage drinking of alcohol in our society. Join us today. This message is brought to you by Distillers and Blenders Association of Nigeria, NAFDAQ, and the Federal Ministry of Health. Welcome back. If you are just joining in, you're watching NAFDAQ and your else. The South-South, as with other regions of the country, are faced with numerous challenges. These limitations posed by some of the state offices current accommodation draws back on general staff motivation and regulatory activities. At the state offices, we are located in Sectidat, Federal Sectidat, and some rented buildings. And uh, these rented buildings 
are not purposely built as offices. At times, the accommodation that we have to adopt to fit office accommodation. Uh, apart from that, the offices that are located in federal secretariat are also not suitable for our functions. So we decided to build new office accommodation. And we have started constructing about seven state offices. As at now, they are the roofing stage, some of them are the roofing stage. And uh, in a couple of months now, they will be nearing a uh, completion. The DG has planned to institute state offices of all NAVJA formations in each state so that we have a, a, a larger facility that is, a, a, that is conducive, a conducive environment as well as befitting environment for our staff to work, work in and have space and have uh, access to our office at, at, various, at various times. But when, when, when we are using, um, let me say the Federal Secretary, for example, there are times when our officers, when they go on inspection or investigation, they have to stay late. They are locked out of the, of the premises. So that is why it's actually really, really important that NAVDAC has its own independent building in the various states. So that is, it, as soon as uh, the DG came in, in 2017, those are one of, the, one of the things that she determined to do, and she has started implementing them, and we've had the privilege of, of that being done in, in, in South South Zone, because to start with, she asked us about the various land, uh, land and facilities that we have that can be developed, and we, we enumerated them, and those ones that were having challenges in getting CO4, she has personally waded into assist us, and that was why that was what brought her to Benin recently in a, in April, the second week of April. She she had an audience with him, the governor of Edo State, His Excellency Governor Baseki, who has promised that yes, he will see to it that we get the land, and that the sea, it's a the sea of all, the documentation will be ready within a week of uh, the DG's uh, discussion with him. And he mandated one of his uh, staff in the Edo State Development um, Agency to take us to the land. And we were all taken to the land. And the DG saw the, saw the place. And, and we were able to consolidate, uh, consolidate further on what the Honorable, the, His Excellency, the Governor of Edo State, has promised. And that land for Bini is to actually develop a befitting office for NAVDAC staff. Construction of the state offices have commenced across the country and many of them are nearing completion. We have one in a, a Lorin in Kuala State, we have one in Bini Kebi in Kebi State, we have one in Sukutu in Sukutu State, we have one in Damatru in Yubi State, one in Abekuta in Ugu State, one in Abakaliki in Boyi State. So presently the buildings are this is they are roofing level roofing stage, just to roof it, equip it with uh, furnitures and other equipment, then we are good to go for, on those, la or those uh, office accommodation. It is worth mentioning that the agency has enjoyed tremendous support from state governments across the country, providing lands and other forms of assistance to the agency. NAMDAC is getting a lot of support from the governors of this state. We have not paid one cobble for any of the parcel of land that we are building up. They were all donated by the governors. Some state we even waived the expenses supposed to pay. We just got another piece of land from uh, Delta State, and almost under seven million dollars was waived. They didn't collect a dime from us. So the governors of these states have been tremendously supportive in us being able to do. And when it comes to the approval of the building, uh, the, the buildings. The approval of the plan, express they do it for us with very minimal cost. So the support has been very wonderful and generous from the state governors. Having surmounted what could have been the primary challenge, which is funding, NAFTAC is well positioned to handle every other challenge and ensure that its building infrastructure across the country meets the standards required of an international class regulatory body it is aiming to become. We want to give it to the present DG. She's very prudent when it comes to managing the finances of the agency. Because if you don't have a lot of money and you don't manage it properly, 
he will discover that you are still the poorest person. But the little we have, she's been able to manage it properly. That is the main reason. Then, the little money we already generate from the services we render to our clients is also helping us. And at the same time, we cannot run away from it. We are also funded by the federal government. So what we also get for, as capital allocation for the federal government, all of these are put together to be able to achieve the little infrastructural development that the agency is experiencing now. What's supposed to have been the major challenge is funding, but we thank God, as I've said, due to the prudent management, we had the fund to be able to address the, the challenges where it has to happen, it has to do with funding. Uh, possibly another challenge that will come will be being able to get the best. We are also managing it. We have our engineers who are also monitoring this project. So I'm sure we'll be able to get over it and we succeed. Time now for our weekly bulletin on NAFTAC's regulatory activities. NAFDAQ steps up efforts to curb drug abuse in Nigeria. As the World Max World Drug Abuse Day on June 26, NAFDAQ continues to work relentlessly to curb drug abuse in Nigeria. Following his successes at clamping down on the influx and distribution of tramadol and other narcotics and psychotropic substances that are being abused across the country, especially by our youth population. NAFDAQ has also identified and is clamping down on other drugs like diclofenac that are being falsified and imported into the country. So we are now looking critically at imports that are coming in because these are not manufactured in Nigeria. These are all imports. Because the clofenac, if you use 100 milligram every day for three months, you're probably going to die faster than even tramadol. Of tramadol will make you crazy and do crazy things. But it doesn't burn whole like the clofenac. That is what is scary about it. And they are bringing it in towns. But we're going to stop it, just like we are trying to do for Tramadol. The agency has put several regulatory mechanisms in place, including bilateral agreements with countries like India and China, to ensure that no drug is allowed to ship to Nigeria without the agency's approval, as well as regional agreements with other West African countries. The problem of drug abuse in Nigeria has risen to alarming proportions, but NAVDAC has also risen to the challenge and has developed a multifaceted approach to curbing the menace. NAVDAC has uh, adopted a multifaceted approach, a multidimensional approach that uh, includes regulatory measures, public enlightenment campaign, advocacies. And the very first thing the incumbent director general did, Professor Mojisola Christian Adeli Adeli, was to uh, quickly uh, confront this issue, uh, this behemoth. She confronted it by launching what we call the YADA, that is, that is the Youth Against Drug Abuse. In other words, declaring a war against drug abuse, but using the, 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 the youth as the foot soldiers in the, in the forefront of the campaign. Because if you truly also want to win this war, you have to use uh, the, the youth who can also reach out uh, to, the young, the, to the youth uh, population that are involved in drug uh, abuse. And uh, that, apart from that, we're also working closely, uh, collaborating with the, the NYSC. Uh, the DG is taking it very seriously. And at the heart of this collaborative effort between NAVDAC and NYSE is the setting up of, in the conception, conceptualization of uh, NAVDAC desk uh, the, uh, that to be set up at the 774 local government areas in the country, uh, using the youth coppers as a, as, a, as a desk officers manning the various desks. So we are also engaging the traditional rulers uh, because when the drug abuse uh, campaign was flagged off in Kano, uh, at the uh, in Kano, uh, the traditional institution was uh, also directly involved. So we're using a multifaceted approach and uh, trying to engage all the, the socialization agents in the country, the traditional institution, the, even the teachers, the religious institution. Uh, some of the things we used to do in the past, try to also uh, to bring it back on board and strengthen it, the mechanism 
towards uh, uh, winning the war against drug abuse. Beyond our youth, the agency is also taking the message to the children in a bid to ensure that we have a Nigeria whose future is drug free. We need to talk to them, we need to catch them young, we need to educate them on drug abuse so that their mind will not be polluted. It is good to catch them young. As I'm doing this, so many of our officers are right there on this still enlightenment campaign on drug abuse in the states and all over the federation. So Even the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And it's when you I mean, um, teach them or talk to them about the issue of drug abuse, then they will be able to know what they have to shy away from, what they should not come near. And then it will be a way to let our children know that whatever they do today, they might not see the immediate repercussion now. But then when it comes to taking drugs, you know, it's something that can go on for a, a quite number of years before you begin to notice or see the, vibe, the, the, the evil that is associated with it. So for that, I want to commend Navdak for a good job, for wanting to come and enlighten our children about the use and then the avoidance of drugs. Navdak continues to apprehend these illicit drugs, destroy them and prosecute offenders. That's it on Navdak Update. You've been updated. That's it for today. Next week on NAFDAQ and Your Health, we'll continue our expose on the agency's infrastructural initiatives in the area of laboratory upgrades across the country. Make it a date, same time, same station next week for a fresh edition. In the meantime, if you have comments, complaints, or you want to report activities of fake drugs or adulterated food product peddlers, our doors are always open. You can reach NAFDA via toll-free numbers. For inquiries, call 0700-162-3322. For complaints, call 0800-162-3322. You may also email NAFDA at nafdaq.gov.ng. If you have complaints about any form of misconduct, you can reach the reforms unit via email reforms at nafdac.gov.ng or call the reforms hotlines on 0909-763-0506 or 0909-763-0506. NAFDAQ, customer focused, agency minded. Remember, COVID-19 is real. Please ensure you and your family follow the safety measures as outlined by the NCDC. Stay away from crowded places as much as possible. And if you must be out there, please wear a face mask. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water and ensure you use only NAFDAQ approved alcohol-based hand sanitizers. See you next week. Stay safe.